Immortal Jellyfish, Turritopsis Dorney. Imagine wanting to live forever and basically saying that aging isn't for you. That's what the Turritopsis Dorney, or the Immortal Jellyfish, basically did. You can call it the Jellyfish with a Time Machine because it has a secret superpower. But unlike other superheroes that have superhuman strength or laser beams, the Immortal Jellyfish has a reset button. Unlike other creatures that die when they're hurt, hungry, or stressed, this jellyfish doesn't give up and die when the going gets tough. Instead, it turns back into a baby version of itself called a polyp. Imagine if humans could deal with bad days by turning into toddlers again. This magical trick has a big sciency name, transdifferentiation. Basically, its cells can change into whatever type it needs. A muscle cell can become a brain cell, a jelly blob cell, or whatever. It's like if your Lego spaceship suddenly turned into a Lego castle. But does that mean this jellyfish lives forever? Well, not exactly. It can still be eaten by predators, contract diseases, or be squished by a sea cucumber. But if nothing bad happens, it can keep resetting and starting over, like hitting the undo button on life. Being functionally immortal has allowed this jellyfish to spark the curiosity of scientists, as they wonder if it could help us understand aging, and maybe even how to fix damaged cells in humans someday. But don't start making plans for your eternal life retirement home just yet, because we're still figuring it all out. Zombie Ant Fungus Let's say you're a simple ant minding your own business, just doing what your queen commands. But a rogue fungus has other plans and hijacks your body. Now instead of doing simple ant stuff, you're now a puppet dancing to the beat of this fungus's tune. That's what happens when ants get infected by Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. This fungus works by spreading tiny spores that stick to an ant, usually a carpenter ant. The spore grows into the ant's body and starts to control it as if the ant is now its video game character in an insect RPG. It turns it into a mindless slave, forced to leave its colony and climb a plant stem to a certain height. This spot is perfect for the fungus to spread its spores and wreak havoc throughout the forest, essentially turning it into an insect bioweapon. Once the ant reaches the right place, it bites down on a leaf or stem and stays locked in place. Scientists call this a death grip. The fungus then kills the ant and grows a stalk out of its head, making it look like the ant world's version of a unicorn. The stalk releases new spores, which which fall to the ground like zombie booby traps to infect more ants. Earth's Space Whistle It's 2012, and the crew of NASA's Themis spacecraft hears a whistling sound, as if someone in space is catcalling them. But it isn't a rogue meteorite trying to catch their attention. Instead, it is a chorus wave, a radio wave coming from Earth. Imagine Earth has a superhero cape, but it's invisible and made of magnets. This cape, called the magnetosphere, keeps us safe from the sun's super-powered sneeze attacks, aka solar winds. When when the sun tries to kamehameha us with charged particles, the magnetosphere blocks most of it. But the impact still makes ripples, kind of like when you flick a rubber band and it makes a twangy sound. These ripples are electromagnetic waves that, if we could hear them, sound like Earth is DJing a cosmic concert with bird chirps and whistling beats. But you can't hear these space whistles with our ears because they're radio waves, meaning you need to use special tools to turn them into sounds. And when they do, they sound like space is hosting an alien concert where Earth is the main event. While these waves only sound like fun tunes to listen to during a road trip, they're actually useful because they speed up particles and even help create the northern and southern lights. Essentially, they're not just a part of a sci-fi soundtrack. A planet made of diamond. 55 Cancri E is what happens if space decides to flex its jewelry game. Tiffany's jewelry shop has nothing on this planet because it's an entire heavenly body shining on a cosmic level and made of diamonds. The deal with 55 Cancri E is that, unlike Earth, it's all about carbon instead of oxygen. Like a cosmic stress ball, it turns into a diamond when carbon gets squeezed under super high heat and pressure. Meanwhile, the surface of this planet is around 4900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like putting an entire world in a pizza oven. So if a planet full of carbon has a super hot surface, it becomes the perfect place to bake diamonds instead of pepperoni, and 55 Cancri E is around twice the size of Earth, making it the literal version of Treasure Planet. While no one has been to this planet before, scientists found out about this shiny planet by checking its size, weight, and density. Then after throwing some space max into the mix, they realize that this planet has a diamond bling setup. While it's not 100% confirmed yet, the idea is shiny enough 
have to believe. But before you get your hopes up about space mining for shiny rocks, chill out. First, this planet is 40 light years away, so you're bound for a long road trip that would take more than an entire lifetime, assuming we can travel at light speed. Second, even if you get there, you'd get roasted faster than a marshmallow at a campfire. So essentially, no diamond hunting for you. Penis fencing in flatworms. You're hanging out with your buddy, but he starts getting a bit too steamy, talking about wanting to have babies with you. You're shocked when he takes his pointy man tool out and challenges you to a sword fight. Instead of a battle to the death, it's a battle to see who can keep their manhood, literally. That's the story of how flatworms mate. Flatworms are born hermaphrodites, which means they have both male and female parts. But when it's time to make babies, neither wants to be the mommy, because like in any other species, carrying eggs takes a lot of energy. So you better thank your mom for carrying you, but because flatworms aren't the most motherly type, they want to stay male as much as possible. That's when a literal sword fight happens, as they try to stab each other with their biological swords. The goal is to inject sperm into the other flatworm to force it into submission and turn it female. This unusual process is called hypodermic insemination, where sperm is injected right into the body tissue. Sometimes one worm gets poked several times before giving up. It might look harsh, but nature's way of solving the who's going to be the mom problem. Fire ice. It might sound like you have the powers of your favorite anime character, but ice that burns isn't a magical phenomenon. Instead, it's all about science, as it involves something called methane hydrate. Now, this stuff looks like regular ice, but when you touch it, it burns. The irony is off the charts, but there's a sensible story behind this. Fire ice forms deep under the ocean, or in frozen ground called permafrost. It's incredibly cold and tight down there, methane gas, basically nature's burp fuel, gets trapped in water molecules. Together, they freeze into a solid that looks just like ice, but hides a fiery secret. So you might be wondering why it burns. Well, when you pull this icy imposter out of its chilly, squishy home, it starts releasing methane gas, as if it had been holding in a huge fart for so long. Strike a match, and it's like a dragon suddenly sneezes. Because of this incredible discovery, scientists think it could be a new energy source. Imagine your stove running on flaming ice cubes. But the problem is that methane is like the evil twin of carbon dioxide in global warming. Letting it loose would be like turning Earth into a giant greenhouse. Goodbye snow days and hello sweaty summers. The tree that bleeds metal. Imagine chopping a tree down, but instead of seeing sap coming out of the tree, you see it releasing metal, as if it's planning to become a blacksmith's best friend. This tree is called Pycnandra acuminata, which hangs out on an island called New Caledonia in in the Pacific. Now, seeing metal coming out of a tree is already weird enough, but the twist here is that this type of metal is nickel, which is supposed to be poisonous for plants. Instead, nickel is a delicious metal smoothie for this plant. It drinks all that nickel like the last soda in the fridge. Its sap can end up so packed with nickel that it's almost a quarter of the tree's weight. Imagine eating junk food all day and turning it into shiny nickels in your veins. That's what this tree is like, as it's made up of mostly metal. But there's a good reason why the tree likes soaking up nickel, like there's no tomorrow. Tomorrow, bugs and animals like to nibble on trees for a good dose of that sweet sap. So this tree evolved and essentially said, don't mess with me, by giving bugs and animals the metallic version of a spicy food challenge. They can't handle this stuff, forcing them to stay away from the tree. That isn't even the best part about it. Scientists believe that it could help us with something called phytomining. That's a fancy word for growing plants to collect metals, instead of digging big, ugly mines. You just plant the tree, wait a bit, then collect its metallic sap. It's like milking a cow, except you get liquid metal instead of milk. Eyeball worms. Let's say you're feeling something odd in your eye, like an itch that won't quit. You look closer and see a tiny worm squiggling around in there. This sounds like something out of a horror movie, but it happens in real life because of eyeball worms. The troublemaker here is a parasite called Thalasia. These little guys usually bother cows and dogs, but sometimes they decide to crash a human party. It all starts when a fly lands near your eye and drops off some worm babies. These baby worms sneak into your eye, thinking it's a warm, wet place that's perfect to call home. Once inside, the worms chill in the conjunctiva, the clear layer of your eyeball, but instead of eating your eyes from the inside, they feed on your tears. To you, tears are just salty drops. To them, it's a fancy buffet. The more you cry, the more they rejoice. So if you have eyeball worms, you might feel like you have sand in your eye, and sometimes you can even see the worms doing their gross little wiggle dance. But don't freak out too much. The cure is simple, a doctor can pluck those worms out with tweezers. It's not painful, just 
super uncomfortable. Viruses that infect other viruses. It might sound like a way of saying that dirt can get dirty, but viruses can also get sick. Yes, those tiny troublemakers who cause illnesses and other diseases can also find themselves lying on a sick bed because of other viruses. But the culprits here are not ordinary viruses, but are called virophages. These cannibalistic viruses don't bother plants, animals, or people. Instead, they go after giant viruses, which are huge compared to regular viruses. This means they're like vigilantes who break the law but hunt down criminals. When a virophage shows up, it's like a sneaky thief breaking into a bigger thief's house. It takes over the giant virus's factory, making more giant viruses. But instead of making more giant viruses, the factory starts churning out virophages. It's like stealing a baker's oven to make your own cookies, while the baker just stands there confused. Basically, virophages are like bullies of the virus world, picking on the big guys. It's like nature saying that every bully has their own bully, and that even viruses can't catch a break. Human Chimeras being a human chimera is like being the subject of a science experiment you didn't sign up for. The mad scientist here is God, mixing up different genes to turn you into a fusion of two different sets of DNA. Yes, you're walking around with a secret DNA buddy you didn't know existed. Here's how it works. Most people start as one teeny tiny fertilized egg in their mom's belly, which grows into one person. But sometimes, two fertilized eggs show up for the party and decide to form a tag team. Instead of being twins, they smoosh together and become one person with mixed DNA. It's like you ate your twin in your mother's womb. Scientists found out about this when Lydia Fairchild learned the hard way when she was told her kids weren't hers, even though she gave birth to them. This is like finding out your children were switched at birth, but it turns out the DNA in her blood didn't match the DNA in her ovaries, so her body had two different DNA zones. But being a chimera is super rare and usually no big deal. Most people have no clue unless they get a fancy DNA test, and there are practically no downsides to being a chimera chimera, except when you're in a big DNA mix and match game. Cockroach milk. You might want to throw out that tub of whey protein powder because there's a new meta in the nutrition world, and it's the type of milk you least expect because it comes from everyone's least favorite insect, the cockroach. But we're not talking about the cockroaches you love to squish under your feet. Instead, we're looking at the Pacific beetle cockroach. Unlike most bugs, it doesn't lay eggs. Instead, it gives birth to baby roaches and feeds them this super nutritious goop. Scientists call it cockroach milk. The crazy part is that this milk has these tiny crystals packed with protein, fats, and sugar. It's like the ultimate power snack that would have turned Arnold Schwarzenegger into the Hulk if he knew about this milk. In fact, it has more nutrients than cow's milk if you compare them gram for gram, so basically it's like a superfood smoothie from a bug. As weird as this may sound, it can be a big breakthrough in science because scientists think cockroach milk could be the food of the future and might be the best way to solve world hunger. But don't worry because scientists aren't planning on growing these bugs on a farm. Instead, they're only trying to copy the milk crystals in a lab, so you don't have to drink a cockroach milkshake after a hard workout. Parasites that change gender. Imagine you're a happy little boy crab, just chilling, doing crab things. Then out of nowhere, this creepy little parasite called Saculina carcini shows up and says, hey, I live here now. But it's not just crashing on your couch. Instead, it's taking over your whole crab life and even changing your pronouns. First, the parasite sneaks inside you like a sneaky ninja. It doesn't just hang out and eat snacks, though. Instead, it starts messing with your insides. While it prefers female crabs, it doesn't really have a choice. So if you're a boy crab, this parasite decides to give you a gender reassignment you never asked for. Now, you may wonder why this parasite wants to give you hormone treatments. Well, because girl crabs are good at caring for eggs, and Saculina wants you to babysit its eggs. It basically turns you into a girl because it wants a nanny. The parasite makes you grow a little egg-carrying pouch, even though you're a boy. Then it forces you to wave water over its eggs to keep them safe and comfy. And you don't even have a say in the matter because the parasite messed with your hormones. It's like your brain got hacked and now you're a full-time foster mother for parasite babies. But the worst part is that it shuts your entire reproductive system down, preventing you from having your own crab babies. Now all your energy goes into a family that's not even yours. The parasite does this because it's super good at surviving. Turning you into a crab nanny helps it make more parasite babies. For the crab, it's a disaster. For the parasite, it's like hitting the jackpot. Octopus punching fish. The ocean can sometimes act as a big boxing ring for two competitors. On the red corner, we have 
have an ordinary fish just minding its business, not even knowing it's battling for the World Fishy Weight Championship. Meanwhile, on the blue corner, we have an octopus with a knack for punching fish. But this bout actually starts in a friendly way. Most of the time, octopuses and fish team up to go hunting. They are like the dream tag team because they both have their own strengths and weaknesses. Octopuses can reach into tiny hiding spots, and fish are great at zipping around in open water. Together, they're pretty good at catching snacks. Then there's the funny part. If a fish is greedy, lazy, or just not helping, the octopus might throw a punch. It curls up one arm and throws a straight punch right on the fish's side. It's kind of like its way of telling the fish to get its act together. However, it's also quite common for the octopus to simply punch the fish because it wants to. Even if the fish didn't do anything wrong, the octopus brings out the big guns and throws a haymaker for the heck of it. Scientists don't have an answer for this, but they think it's the octopus's way of showing who's boss. Or maybe it's just having a grumpy day and is releasing its frustrations on an innocent fish. Exploding Ant You may have heard of kamikaze airplanes willing to take one for the team and take out enemies by offing themselves, but you can also find ants willing to take a proverbial bullet for everyone by unaliving themselves to save its colony. Meet the Colobopsis Explodens, a Southeast Asian ant with a crazy defense trick. What these ants do is that they're like the first line of defense when a bigger bug tries to attack their home. In their effort to repel their attackers, they flex their bodies so hard that they explode. It turns out their bodies are packed with a toxic goo that sprays all over the place after the explosion. This goo can be toxic enough to kill the bad guy. If it doesn't, it traps the enemy bug on nature's version of a fly trap long enough for the other ants to jump on it and kill it. So while the ants that explode don't make it, it gave its life up for a bigger cause by saving its colony. But not all ants in the colony do this, though. Only special ants have the explodo goo power. It's like they're the firefighters of the group, ready to handle emergencies. The queen and other ants keep things running while these brave little warriors are on duty. It wasn't until 2018 that scientists discovered this behavior, but they wondered why, instead of biting or spraying chemicals to defend themselves, they acted like a Michael Bay movie with a lot of explosions. According to scientists, these ants evolved as a result of teamwork, as these colonies discovered that maybe it's more effective for some of them to go kaboom to save their families.